Hello guys, Winston here. No project video this week because I was down in DC last weekend, but I figured I'd put out a quick little video on how to install and tension GT2 belts on the Shape Oko 3. Unlike the belts on the Shape Oko 2, which are stretched by directly applying force to the belt anchors, the Shape Oko 3 makes use of gravity to conveniently and consistently tension the X and Y axis belts. To start off, you'll want to install your belt anchors to your base frame. Your GT2 should be run between your anchors such that when mounted, there's still a little slack in it. For excess lengths of GT2, you should trim off just enough to prevent having a double thickness of belt being crushed under your idler bearings. The ideal tension for 6mm wide GT2 is between 10 to 15 pounds. Since the Shape Oko 3 weighs about 50 pounds and the belting has a nearly vertical run up to its pulley, lifting up each end of the machine by its stepper motor will put about 12 pounds of tension on the belt. While it's easiest to do this with a second pair of hands, if you just barely loosen the nuts holding the stepper motors to the carriage plate, you should be able to single-handedly secure the motor in the high position when you lift it up. Repeat twice more and your X and Y axes should be properly tensioned. The Z axis is a little different. Because it uses a closed loop belt that gets tensioned by pinching it with a slot mounted standoff, there's no real shortcut here. I find it easiest to install the Z carriage plate from the top of the extrusions. You just need to remove a couple spacers first. There should be just enough slack to slip the belt over the top of the pulley. Once you start putting tension on the belt, friction should keep your slot mounted standoff from turning while you tighten it down. Once you check to make sure the belt is taut and doesn't skip over the Z motor pulley's teeth, you should be good to go. Hope you found this video useful, I want to thank you all very much for watching, and if you have any questions about the Shape Oko 3's mechanics or any details you're curious about, feel free to drop me a comment down below and I'll try to answer it in a future video. By the way, if you can't for the life of you tighten down your Z-axis belt enough to keep it from skipping, you may want to contact Carbide Support. The GT2 supplier for the Shape Oko 3 may have shipped out a limited number of belts that are just a couple millimeters too long. Edward and the team will sort you out and send you a replacement belt. This should not be an issue for any machine packaged after May.